Welcome back, Guardians. Firstly, thank you to everyone who participated in my first live law stream last week, despite the 480p quality. Unfortunately, that is all my Australian internet can handle, but regardless, it was still very enjoyable to speak with everyone. I would like to make it a regular event, and my plan is to release a Destiny Law video and then live stream directly after the video's release. I'll let you know once I have a schedule and be sure to follow me on Twitter to keep updated. During the stream, many questions were asked about the Iron Lords, and this video is in direct response to your questions. I hope you enjoy. Lord Saladin holds the Iron Banner in memory of the ancient warriors who assisted in the first defence of the city, the Battle of Six Fronts. During the Battle of Six Fronts, four orders of titans defended the city against the fallen who attacked from six different approaches. However, it was not just titans who defended the city. The warlock Osiris was present, and it should be noted that not all of the Iron Lords were titans. I have previously made a fan fiction comic book on the Battle of Six Fronts and how a small number of titans could repel a large fallen force. The link is in the description and on screen. However, please beware there are some minor inconsistencies with the law, specifically around the Iron Lords. So Lord Saladin holds the Iron Banner in memory of the Iron Lords, but who are the Nine Lords of Iron? They include Three Warlocks, Felwinter, Scory, and Timur. Three Hunters, Ephrodite, Gileon, and Perrin. And three Titans, Jolda, Radagast, and Silimar. But what happened to the nine Iron Lords following the victory at Six Fronts? Well, a couple of artifacts may provide clues to their downfall. Radagast's Blade, which is a Titan artifact, reads... So long as the sword was whole, the Iron Banner could not be broken. Obviously, this artifact depicts a broken sword, so we assume something happened to the Iron Lords to break them apart. A Warlock artifact, Seagoth's Head, provides greater insight into this. It says, Thought we formed the banner to fight the darkness, not ourselves. Just don't bode well. That's all I'm saying. Gileon. Now this artifact is extremely interesting, it is a warlock artifact, which appears to be a titan's head, and the dialogue is by Gileon, an Iron Lord Hunter. Also the character Seagoth does not appear in any other Grimoire cards or other item descriptions. Whilst highly speculative, maybe this artifact suggests that one of the warlock Iron Lords betrayed a teammate, specifically a titan, beheading them. And maybe this cascaded into an internal war between the Iron Lords. The Warlock Iron Lord, Felwinter, is likely a prime suspect in this betrayal, considering the name of the Iron Banner shotgun, Felwinter's Lie. In addition, the Iron Camelot Hood speaks of Felwinter staring into the void, which may imply Felwinter's fall into darkness. Many have tried to create stories confirming this internal conflict from the subtle clues of the Iron Banner items. Felwinter's Lie, Scory's Revenge, Timur's Lash, Ephrodite's Spear, Gileon's Demise, Perrin's Fire, Jolda's Hammer, Redegar's Fury, and Silimar's Wrath. Personally, I think it is quite difficult to formulate anything accurate to the events that took place from such small amounts of information. However, I do think it is safe to assume that there was a battle between the Lords of Iron resulting in some of their deaths. The second Warlock artifact, Scory's Dirge, hints that maybe Scory avoided the conflict between the Iron Lords and had left the Iron Banner prior to the battle. Consequently, she may have witnessed the death of her fellow Lords. The item reads, they say she's apart from the Iron Banner, yet she sings songs of her lost companions. In addition, Scory's Iron Bond may reinforce that Scory was able to rise above the internal conflict. It reads, Rise above, 
so that you may lift those below. Despite this, Scurry is confirmed as being dead, as are all of the Iron Lords. This confirmation is provided in the Iron Camelot armor for each class. For example, the Titan armor reads, Forged in remembrance of Jolda, she whose mighty hammer taught the darkness fear. Forged in remembrance of Silimar, he who was the last city's first wall. Forged in remembrance of Radagast, he who was first among the peers of the Iron Banner. This is repeated for the Warlock and Hunter armour. Following the death of the Nine Iron Lords, I believe they were replaced by Nine Iron Wolves. This story is told to us by the Wolfswood Hunter Cloak, Warlock Bond and Titan Mark. They read, In our darkest hour, nine iron wolves emerged from the ruins. Under a red dawn, the iron wolves gathered beneath the iron wood, and beneath its branches, the iron wolves forged an unbreakable oath. I believe the names of the iron wolves are Hakon, as seen in Hakon's hatchet, Finilla, as seen in Finilla's peril, Nerwin, as seen in Nerwin's mercy, Colavance, as seen in Colavance's duty, Ashraven, as seen in Ashraven's flight, Deirdris, as seen in Deirdris's retort, Waleran, as seen in Waleran's march, Bredomart, as seen in Bredomart's stand, and Tormod, as seen in Tormod's bellows. As you can see, the Iron Wolves are associated with a very different set of words. Mercy, duty, march, stand. In comparison to the Iron Lords, lie, lash, revenge, fury, wrath, fire, spear. The Iron Wolves' oath aimed to correct the mistakes of the Iron Lords, an oath to bound and unite them as one. The sigil of the Iron Banner reminds us of this story, the gathering of the Nine Wolves beneath the Iron Wood and serves to remind us of the importance of teamwork, to stand as one in the face of our enemies. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this latest Destiny Lore episode. If you would like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the words, Iron Wolves. Once again, it's been a pleasure, this is Mylan Games. Peace.